I prepared this video in direct response to an email message I recently received. The sender indicated that the sense of humor I display during my presentations and interviews indicates I'm not serious about the dire straits we're in. With this video, I'm posing two questions, and perhaps even answering the questions I'm asking. First, if you can't laugh while you're dying, then what kind of life did you have? Second, was it worth it? In response to the idea of near-term human extinction, several years ago I came up with stage six of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's five stages of grief, gallows humor. The snippets I've extracted from this presentation are consistent with stage six. This short video includes several tidbits I've edited out of a presentation I delivered on October 17, 2017. The original presentation was prepared and delivered as the inaugural talk for the Schultz Awareness Series at Woodbury University in Burbank, California. The series of presentations was created with the ingenuity and financial support of Dr. Robert Schultz, Professor Emeritus at Woodbury University. Professor Schultz also paid my travel expenses for this presentation. We monetize songbirds at five bucks a piece. Who are we? Is every songbird worth five bucks? I used to ask my students, what's the last songbird worth? And the really smart ones, and by smart I mean smart ass, would say, nothing. It's the last one, it's functionally extinct. Okay, what about the last pair? What about the last 30 in a minimum viable population size? We monetize everything, every single thing. We've monetized the air. Last year when I was uh, touring in New Zealand, New Zealand air was being put into steel cans. I say this and I think I'm insane. But uh, this was actually happening. New Zealand air was being put into steel cans and sold in Beijing, China. Yes, put into steel cans and shipped all the way to China and sold for 85 cents a breath. You can't tell me that that steel can is worth less than 85 cents. We're monetizing the very air we breathe and we think it's normal. Before civilization started popping up a few thousand years ago, like trolls on YouTube just all over the globe all of a sudden, before that there was no such thing as monetizing anything. You want food, you go and you pick it up off the ground. The food was just there, nobody was charging for it. Same with the water. When I was a kid, we used to drink out of streams, which might explain a lot about what's going on in my brain, <laughs> now that I think about it. But in Northern Idaho, you could go up to almost any stream and drink out of it. I wouldn't do that today. You're taking your life into your hands. We need to reverse emissions or implement negative emissions. So we're putting all, it's such a bizarre term, <coughs> negative emissions. So we're putting up emissions, carbon dioxide emissions. We need to use, we need to implement negative, what does that even mean? Negative, that reminds me of George Carlin. He's talking about how bizarre the language is. And, and one of his examples is pre-boarding. Pre-boarding the airplane, was that you get on before you get on? <laughs> negative emissions? Will you unburn fossil fuels? It's not a videotape and you just run it backwards. Right, it burns for a while and then boom, you got a log there. Or a chunk of coal. That's all, let's do more of that. Negative emissions. You're gonna have to get on before you get on. You're gonna have to unburn the fossil fuels. You're gonna have to run the tape backwards. What the hell is this? Are these people crazy? People ask me all the time, yeah, okay, whatever, when am I gonna die? What's my expiration date? Like if it was stamped on your heel, that'd be really handy, wouldn't it? You could just check it every now and then, oh, two years, I can still be a jerk. Humans require habitat, even Homo calidus. That's what I've renamed our species. Somebody somewhere along the line named us Homo sapiens. I don't know who that was, but they were in the same category of people who think we can get on before we get on. Homo sapiens, do you know what that means? It means the wise ape. Yep. Are you shitting me? <laughs> the and we did it twice. 
We're not homo sapiens, we're homo sapiens sapiens. <laughs> we're really wise. Have you noticed what's happening in the world? Wisdom applied to our species collectively? We need to get off before we get off. Never mind getting on. This is crazy. Anyway, I named us Homo calidus. Nobody else has thought this was a, a good idea. Homo calidus means the clever ape. We are really clever. I don't think we're so wise. Were we wise, we might have been thinking a few generations ahead instead of 15 minutes ahead. The universe is 13.8 billion years old, plus or minus a few days. And we've been here for 300,000 years. 300,000 years. Think about that for a minute with me. 300,000 years we've been here. The universe has been here 13.8 billion years, and it's all about us. The universe was really patient. I gotta say, waiting almost 13.8 billion years to manifest this into existence? How nice is that? It's like nothing was happening in the universe for 13.8 billion years, and then the universe goes, oh, you know what I need? I need Homo sapiens sapiens. Let's just put them out there. And then the pre-boarding began. We're not extinct yet. And until we are, and we won't know when we are, by the way. That's the bummer of the whole thing. The last person on the planet to die will not know they're the last person on the planet to die. Right, they'll just know they have a lot of time to read. And then when they die, they won't know that we're extinct. So we'll never know that we're extinct. So the best we can do is this is probably it. We don't know when we're gonna die. And when we die, it's too late. We can't say, I died. You know, it's like the worst part about my message, I can't ever say, I told you so. Because when we go extinct, I can't say, see? So what do I propose? Everybody wants to know something, right? What do I propose? You gotta have an answer. If you don't have an answer, I'm not paying. Oh wait. I propose three things. I propose that you either remain calm, depending upon your natural character, or that you become calm, because some people aren't. I used to say just remain calm, that's sort of assuming, isn't it? That everybody's calm to begin with, but I've seen a lot of people who were not very calm. There's like all those people riding with my grandfather when he died in his sleep at the wheel. They were not calm at all. Remain calm, nothing is under control, certainly not under our control. What do we have power over? What do we have the ability to control? A few things, right? The relationships of the people close to us. Right, we can ruin the day of a few people in our lives pretty much any day, but not for long, because then those people won't be in our lives anymore. So we do have some control over the well-being of the people in our circle. That's about it. Nothing is under control, at least not under our control. So, chill. That's all I'm trying to say here. Secondly, pursue excellence. In a culture of mediocrity, there will be no external rewards. None. You pursue excellence, people will absolutely hate you. If you're better at your job than anybody else at your job site, everybody there is going to hate you. How many people have you seen slow down because they're too good to fit in? Happens all the time. This is a culture of mediocrity. That's what we reward. Who's the boss? At the end of the day, who's the boss? Who do you report to at the end of every day? You. That's it. One person. The person you face in the mirror. Pursue excellence, even if it pisses everybody off. We really only have to report to one person. And then finally, pursue love. Do what you love. Do what you love, do it well. Love isn't such a bad thing. Let's do that. Tennessee Williams had this great line, 
<clears throat> something like, the earth is perennially on fire. And the only response to that is love. I'm talking about the love of the arts, love of the people around us, love of the living planet. The world is perennially on fire. And the response to that is love. It's almost as if he knew about abrupt climate change. 